Yes. Okay. Good. Here we are. Well, um, I'm Kasper Spaan, uh, working for Waternet, the Amsterdam-based uh, water cycle company. Yeah, and, and my name is John Boxham, and I'm working for the uh, program called Amsterdam Rainproof, which is a program initiated by the, uh, the uh, Waternet or the Water Board of Amsterdam. Um, and before we uh, uh, will elaborate on the project we're doing with the Things Network right now uh, uh, concerning the smart micro water management, uh, we'll briefly uh, discuss uh, the problem uh, statement at hand. Um, well, we're facing uh, climate change. Um, we're not uh, discussing that. Uh, we uh, see uh, densifying of cities, um, and that's the challenge uh, at hand. Uh, and in those cities, we see uh, roughly uh, a 60 40 percentage uh, in public. And private space. In the public space, we see uh, the government working on uh, climate adaptation issues, but now we are focusing especially on the private uh, space where we see a lot of possibilities for uh, water retention and water storage. Yeah, so that still may sound very theoretically, um, but this was Amsterdam on the 28th of July in 2014, where a cloudburst hit the city uh, with a total amount of 90 millimeters. Uh, a day, uh, but intensities, uh, intensities went up uh, to 135 millimeters per hour. Uh, and you have to think of that the sewer system is capable of only uh, 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 handling up to 20 millimeters an hour. Um, so this was two years ago. Uh, last year we also had a cloudburst, uh, a smaller one than this one. Uh, but in total, uh, those two cloudbursts would uh, cost the city 50 million euros. Often the solution uh, is thought of, well, let's install a bigger sewerage pipe. Uh, well, in the professional community of water management, uh, it's, concern, it's uh, considered not the solution. Uh, we should aim for more sponge-like cities where uh, the whole surface area of the city is working for uh, optimal water management. Uh, one of the first uh, uh, pilots uh, where we learned the capabilities uh, of uh, micro water management was the polder roof. Uh, it was a water storage facility underneath uh, the green roof as is shown. Um, and one of the uh, remarkable innovations we added uh, was a valve-like uh, system that could control the water level uh, underneath uh, the green area. Yeah, and, and the idea of this polar roof is that um, uh, we're able to uh, contain the, the, the peak intensities of, of cloudbursts uh, and can discharge them at a later moment, uh, whenever it's uh, dry for a couple of hours already. Um, and uh, yes, these uh, innovations are going on, um, um, but gets really interesting whenever you can uh, uh, connect those those standalone smart, smart micromanagement systems um, with each other or with uh, the cloud. And, and that's where the Things Network uh, uh, walks in. Uh, we found each other and uh, because if you want to connect them, you, you'll, you'll need this uh, digital platform uh, that is able uh, to allow for plugging in different kind of systems. Um, uh, handling uh, all the data and also uh, um, uh, steering your rainwater. Um, this could mean that if you if you zoom into the local uh, context, um, this could be the future house, uh, or you could also apply this to a, a company or a, a larger building, uh, where house owners or product owners uh, could install their preferences of uh, whenever they want to discharge the rainwater. Um, and uh, they can choose whether to dis discharge to a combined sewer system or separate, uh, depending on uh, the geographical location of it. Um, but they could also dis uh, uh, um, uh, uh, make the decision to discharge to the garden uh, whenever it gets dry. Um, there are many, many uh, um, options and possibilities for smart micromanagement um, and in, in order to prevent the, the, the overflowing of uh, sewer systems. 
Uh, this picture shows uh, where we are focusing on uh, the field that uh, defines the water net application. We see that a lot of uh, product owners uh, or product developers uh, are working on, on, on smart uh, micro systems. We see smart rain barrels. We see uh, smart polar roof systems. Uh, um, and uh, our challenge is uh, to create uh, an application that can connect with all the different devices. And then when we use weather forecast and can um, uh, can foresee uh, a storm uh, stormwater events coming up, we can create maximum uh, storage capacity in those systems. Yeah. And uh, so that's where we are at with the Things Network right now. So we're developing this. Uh, so the Things Network is developing this C platform, the city platform as a service. Uh, and on top of that, we're uh, creating this use case of WaterNet application. Um, and yes, there are still many, many uncertainties, many questions uh, to be uh, answered. Uh, so about the, the, the data, the privacy, etc. Um, but what we also uh, at the same time see is that there are many contextual uh, market developments um, uh, that could allow for uh, um, more demand on those water systems, such as uh, a tax dif uh, differentiation or uh, the so-called water neutral building envelope, um, uh, which obligates uh, developers um, to retain their own rainwater at their own plot. Um, these contextual factors will uh, um, enhance uh, uh, this innovation, um, and we're happy that we're uh, doing this together with uh, uh, Things Network. Uh, and I think we'll leave it at that. Um, so, if there are any questions, feel free. Let's see. Feel free. All right, great. Thanks a lot. Um, I think this is another very good example um, for like this technology for it being used. I think it's also mainly outdoor applications. Um, yeah, yeah. technology is mainly suitable. Uh, yeah, it's more on the conceptual uh, level. Um, but I mean, we're, we're developing this in Amsterdam now, but uh, in, in different cities around the world, uh, they're facing the same problems. Uh, so this technology could also enhance their uh, ability to, to solve the rainwater issues. Yeah, yeah. And um, to be clear, can you like can you elaborate a little bit more on like this this micro management? Is it something I should have on my roof myself in maybe a year from now? Uh, maybe not in a year, but uh, we're working with uh, different uh, product developers uh, to uh, create a market for such micro systems. Um, why would you want one? Uh, why would you want a smart rain barrel uh, next to that? It's very uh, fancy, of course. Uh, it could uh, help you uh, create maximum storage capacity and, and the use of rainwater for your garden. But eventually, we're working on uh, things like tax differentiation. So there's another incentive to invest on the public uh, uh, or on the private plot in such systems. Yeah. So on the one hand, there you, you have the, the fun factor, of course, uh, that you're able to, to control your own rainwater from, uh, from the beach in, in Spain, uh, for instance, and to water your garden. Uh, on the other hand, uh, there, there are these incentives to, uh, to be created uh, in the contextual uh, market. Yeah, great. Thanks for the, for the, for the elaborate answer. Um, see one question is popping in now. Uh, since there's a 1% duty cycle, how do you tend to send instructions to all connected rooms? We're still working on um, uh, the, the autonomy of the systems themselves. Uh, if they are um, uh, a bit smart themselves, they don't need uh, a continuous data feed uh, if they're working or not. So that's why how we uh, try to keep uh, the data uh, down. Nice. 